All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking on Vion at this, at this hour. Now, the world is watching as to how Taiwan defends its democracy amidst tensions with China. This is what the Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen had said while campaigning for the local elections in her country. Her move to largely focus on China, however, seems to have backfired with the voters as Taiwan's ruling dispensation, the Democratic Progressive Party, has been trounced in the local polls. Now, as a consequence of this drubbing, the president, Tsai Ing-wen, has now tendered her resignation from the position of the chairperson of the DPP after the worst showing by the party in its history. All eyes are now on Taiwan's next presidential elections that will take place in the year 2024. The question that, of course, a lot of people are now asking is, will this defeat now spell bad news for the ruling party in the long run in Taiwan? And how will this impact Taiwan's relationship with China and indeed with the United States and with the rest of the world? Another key player in Taiwan, the main opposition party, Kuomintang, has surprisingly romped home to victory in the mayoral and county elections. It has managed to win 13 of the 21 seats that were up for grabs. This includes the wealthy and the cosmopolitan Taipei. The DPP for now has been left with just five mayor and county chief positions. But what has triggered this landslide victory for the Kuomintang party? Now, chances are that it was DPP's intense focus on geopolitics. So let's try and understand as to what actually may have changed the fortunes of Tsai Ing-wen in Taiwanese politics. The Taiwan's local elections generally focus on domestic issues, such as social welfare, such as housing, energy, crime, and how well the government dealt with the COVID-19 infections and the pandemic. Instead of focusing on these issues, Tsai Ing-wen, the person that you look at in the center of your screens there, chose to talk about China and about the cross-strait relations and the tensions that have been ongoing in the Taiwanese Strait. She also reiterated as to how her government has chosen to put up a strong front in standing up against China. She framed the campaign issue for a local election on how her government was taking on China's rising belligerence, especially after it held military drills near the island in August. And President Xi Jinping won an unprecedented third term in the office just last month. Now, this might have served as negative campaigning for the party and is said to have benefited the opposition, which centered its campaign essentially on local issues, like a spike in the number of COVID-19 infections. The Kuomintang traditionally is said to favor closer ties with China, but it strongly denies being a pro-Beijing party. It had been on the back foot since the 2020's presidential election loss, and it also suffered a big blow last December after its referendum against the government had failed. But now the tables might be turning for the party, and analysts say that the results in fact reflect a public desire within the Taiwanese society for peace and stability and also for a better life, as cross-strait relations could ease under the Kuomintang. And this could also benefit the Taiwanese investors and also those who are invested heavily in China or have a lot of assets in China. So what does this mean for the general election that will be held in Taiwan in the year 2024? Now, unlike the domestic elections, presidential polls are typically dominated by voters' views on how the island's democracy should handle relations with China and relations with Beijing, which has vowed to bring the island under its rule, even if, both, if, even if it be by force if needed. Now, this will, of course, be a key test for the candidates who are aiming to succeed Tsai Ing-wen. All hope, of course, is not lost for the ruling party yet. It bounced back in the 2020 presidential and the parliamentary elections, despite having been defeated in the 2018 local elections. But one thing is clear. Taiwan is set for a very contentious presidential race in the year 2024. The Kuomintang, of course, faces accusations that it will sell out Taiwan to China and is not committed enough to the democratic institutions in the country. While the DPP is accused of deliberately hyping the confrontation with Beijing, for political benefit. Internal jockeying for the next presidential candidate has already begun within the party, as the incumbent president, Tsai Ing-wen, cannot run for a third term.
So this, of course, is what is happening in the politics in Taiwan. Remember, this has, of course, been an extremely a difficult year, considering the tensions that have been witnessed between China and Taiwan in the Taiwan Straits, especially in the aftermath of the visit of the top American diplomat to Taiwan, which had resulted in massive military exercises by Beijing. That, that of course, had caused a lot of tensions in the Taiwan Strait, but it now remains to be seen as to how things will, of course, progress from here. Remember, what were held in Taiwan recently were local level elections to elect the mayors and county chiefs. But this local election is likely to have national consequences within Taiwan because a lot of people are looking at the performance of Tsai Ing-wen, the issues on which she has been dealt with and what the voters have now said. But also keep in mind, because these were local elections, perhaps the approach of the voters was very different. Probably they wanted to send a message to the leadership in Taiwan that they expected Tsai Ing-wen and they expect Tsai Ing-wen to pay more attention to local issues as well, like that of housing, like that of dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, like that of dealing with unemployment. These are crucial everyday bread and butter issues. And this was something that was completely ignored by Tsai Ing-wen. She spoke about how she was putting up a brave front in the face of Chinese belligerence. She also spoke about how she was winning more allies. And it remains to be seen as to how the people in Taiwan, of course, reflect on this. All right, now to give us more perspective on this story, we're being joined by Kat Thomas, who is a freelance journalist based out of Taipei, and she's joining us live on this broadcast. Now, Ms. Thomas, this, this, of course, is an election that has been watched very closely around the world and not just in Taiwan. It's watched very closely in Beijing and indeed even in the United States. Now, is there a message which the people of Taiwan have sent to their president, Tsai Ing-wen, on the issues that she's campaigned for? I think the first thing to remember, of course, is these are local elections, and so people were voting on local issues as opposed to voting on international issues such as the relationship with China. Um, so the message I think that has been sent to Tsai Ing-wen is that the DPP, the incumbent party, simply weren't strong enough on local issues such as income inequality, wage stagnation, high housing prices in this kind of arena. Um, it's not really when the, the electorate goes to vote in Taiwan in the local elections, they, they're not thinking about the relationship, for example, with PRC. They're very much thinking about their everyday lives. So the message has been sent quite clearly, I would say, to the DPP that they didn't do enough in this election to right. address the concerns. But do you think that explains the fact that this is the worst drubbing that DPP has got in these elections? Yes, um, I, I, I think largely so. Um, they simply, there was a lot of mudslinging in this election. There wasn't very much put set out in terms of solid, concrete policy on how lives would improve for people in the day-to-day -day running. And also there was a low turnout, which also suggests that voters were not very engaged. It was only around 60%, whereas normally in a local election, would expect around 66 percent and right. in a presidential election more like 75. So. All right. And also my question to you is, you know, what, what do you think will now change in terms of how Tsai Ing-wen will govern Taiwan? She's got two more years to be the president of Taiwan and after that she can't contest the election again because there is a two term limit. So do you think there will be a change in terms of the campaign issues that the DPP will raise going ahead after this? I think the DPP is going to have to reflect deeply on how they've failed to engage voters this time around. The other interesting thing that's happened this time, of course, is that a third party has gained control of one of the major cities, opening up the chance to more of a three-way race come around the presidential elections, which, of course, is quite interesting. All right. We will have to leave that. Thank you very much indeed, Ms. Thomas, for joining us from Taipei and getting us all those insights there. Thank you very much. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.